Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Courage Over Comfort. My next guest is a cheerleader of mine, and uh, just a moment ago, I had said that's how I was going to introduce him. Uh, see, he's really been a cheerleader for me because of the work that I do. He's just been in my corner, and um, you know, really, what is a cheerleader? Just they're they're there to support you, and he's done an awesome job of that. So, thank you very much. Yeah, His pleasure. name is Juan Murillo. Nice to meet you. But I can't roll the R. So. <laughs> Murillo. There you go. All right. We'll stick with Juan Murillo. Yeah, all right. Everybody cool. recognizes that. So, Do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself or um, just uh, let's dig into your story? Well, we can. I mean, we could just dig into my story as yeah. you know, get that moving right away. So. I, I know you lost your brother. Yep. I don't know how. It doesn't matter. But what I have been encouraged is your courage by just being a, a contributing member to society, not just... You know, I, I mean, people can go down a really terrible path, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen that from you. I'm sure that you have dark days, oh, like yeah. we all do. Yep. But uh, tell us about about that. Um, well, uh, obviously, it's something I'll never forget. Yeah. Right. Um, in fact, uh, when it happened, it happened on a uh, very special day for uh, for all moms because it happened on Mother's Day. Oh wow! And and uh, I remember my my wife and family and i were living in, in byron at the time and and uh you you get that phone call in the morning and you sometimes you wonder why why is somebody calling you at you know at at this time and when you see it's your mom it's probably pretty serious right and i remember getting the phone call and my mom was crying and i knew something was up and at at first i thought maybe it was uh her husband uh i don't know <clears throat> but she said, your, your brother's dead. And it was like a long pause. Almost, I almost felt like it was cinematic. Like sure. it was a movie that was just playing right now. Yeah. And the world stopped. And I'm like, of course, which one? Because I have mm. two older brothers that are twins. And then myself and my sister that are twins. So we have two sets of twins in the family that... That's uh, that's pretty remarkable in itself. It's very unique, I'll tell you that. So, so she told me it was my brother Gabriel, and and I'm like, and you know, long story short, to make uh, about my brother Gabriel, he's his his life just from the beginning to to the end was always a challenge. I mean, it was tough for him. Uh, he was a very stubborn person, but in his I think in his right way. You know, I sure. think I think he had so much confusion in his heart that he just he was getting pulled in so many different directions so bad decisions sometimes after bad decisions and and as time goes on and we grow older and we become more wise i start to realize that like most people i think he was just looking for somebody to truly love him and mm. i don't think there's been somebody that told him that and and truly meant it besides his family and our separation as a family was i mean you know again we were brought up to uh, the age of 12 ish 13 and we were put in separate foster homes and so our our bond was breaking and mm -hmm. you know when you have a twin sister and two other brothers that are twins and their bond breaks it's 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 tough so i get this phone call it's gabriel he's he's dead and um i didn't know what to do you know i i needed more information so we got off the phone and then she uh my mom would call, call back later and, and started to tell me how it happened. And so the initial phone call, it was just, he's, he died. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Wow. You know, I asked how, of course, and as I start to think back about the story, cause I do, um, yeah. but, uh, it was, you know, I've never really been through something like that. And, you know, I've had, um, you know, friends of friends that are close to me who've had a parent die or, or a sibling die or something, mm -hmm. but, um, you just, you just hear the story, but then when it's you and you're involved and, and, and the connection is so much deeper, you start to realize that, oh, wow, this is, this is the way, this is what the weight of the world feels like right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for sure, how do you carry it? So, you know, you, you mentioned dark days, you yeah. know, and, and maybe it looked like, like I didn't have any of those days per se. Right. But, um, I knew what I was feeling, but I wouldn't accept it. Like mm. I kept telling myself that, Hey, I, I know how you're feeling and, and this is totally normal. But I also kept telling myself, no, it's not, it's not, you can get past this. This is no big deal. It's, this is life. 
during that time, and it's no secret if anybody follows me on social media, everybody knows that my my belief in faith has changed completely. Mm-hmm. I used to believe, and and now I don't. And sure, and I'm sure it's just because of this current circumstance. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There hasn't been anything that's been, um, you know, that's influenced it enough to say maybe maybe you should start believing right now. Mm. So I struggle with that. Yeah, a lot lot and so uh, did you grow up believing then did uh, like a faith type background so or I, I was a I was a Lutheran and my foster family was uh, Catholic okay and so um, they would drop me off at the Lutheran Church in in Pittsville Wisconsin which is where I went to high school and they would go to the Catholic Church mm. and you know they then picked me up and of course we got done sooner than the Catholic <laughs> Church sure so and and our church was right next to the elementary school so there was some basketball hoops out there so i hit a basketball over okay. by the <laughs> over by the hoops so i love it when i got done i ran over there and started to play basketball but then but i knew they were probably catching on because i'd get into the car sweaty you know <laughs> right so so i'm like sunday school was great so so yeah so i grew up with faith of of, of some sort but again um i'm a i'm a i'm a very imaginative person so mm. i wonder a lot and okay i think uh I think it gets me in a lot of trouble, but mm. but I like testing those boundaries. Sure, you know because I think if we don't imagine, we don't create. If we don't create, we don't come up with something special. Yeah. and so you know the the faith thing. My my mom tells me how he died, and the moment that 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 was told to me, I then I, I blamed everybody. Mm. You know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. everybody else's fault. It wasn't it wasn't the circumstance. It wasn't the his design i blamed everybody including god yeah right and i think that's normal the more i the more i talk to people and, and they said that's absolutely normal to go through you know a traumatic experience and then not accept really you know this you yeah know? and and uh he uh and i think i blamed that so much on him because of how he died his his death was as described to me very gruesome and um when you start thinking about if if we are god's children you know and you had all the power to control whether or not you can hurt or love or prevent something from happening with your children why would you let your child die so gruesomely Mm -hmm. you know and that that's been my challenge and to this day i struggle with that you know um whenever we get into uh faith-based conversations that gets brought up all the time and and I, I sit there and I bite my tongue because I, I really want to say how I'm feeling, but it's not their fault. That it's it's not. It's yeah. it's their belief, it's their opinion, it's their um, guidance, and it's okay. And and I I need to learn to accept that that that's okay, you mm-hmm. know. And I still can have the feelings I have right now, and and that should be okay too. You For know? sure, you know. So. Um, one of the things I always remember is like, uh, you know, going through my experience with where I work. I've been there 13 years and, and we did a uh, uh, Stephen Covey training. Mm. And at first I was like, what is all this stuff, right? But then, then you start to realize, it, and there's one thing that's always stuck with me. Seek to understand, then to be understood. Yes. First do that. Yes. And I think you could answer a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. You know, don't jump to conclusions. Don't, don't put this, um, this uh, only one road opinion on people and say you're wrong i'm right right because of how i'm feeling you right know? so so yeah so you know the, which is there's a ton of wisdom stephen covey is amazing yes uh there's a ton of wisdom and i'm not sure which training you did but yep. i'm assuming the seven habits Seven habits. Are yeah. Very effective, yeah yeah it's, there's some amazing stuff in that yep. for sure and that's really what um I like how you said it's not like I'm right, you're wrong, or even vice versa. And I think that's where there's so much confuse, confusion with faith. Yeah. Right. It's it. That's what it is. Yep. I mean, it's believing in something that you can't see. Something. Yeah. Yep. And I respect a lot of different faiths. I have, you know, I grew up in in a, a house similar to yours, not yep. foster wise, but faith wise. Yep. And so I have that. I've been able to hang on to that. But I respect a lot of the other beliefs in that they have those the 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 way that they think. I don't think they're wrong. Right. I yeah. accept that. Including yourself. Yeah. Like I we get along great. Yeah, for sure. You know, and so that's the point. Yep. We understand each other, I think. Yep. I think yeah. uh I think and this goes again back to my brother because when you don't know, it's 
it's really difficult to keep moving forward, mm -hmm. right? Because that's always the question. Why? You know, you need to know, you need to figure that out. And yeah. during people's lives, their, their whole lives, sometimes they just don't figure it out. But it didn't take me very long to start to realize, you know, why do we even exist? Mm. You know what I mean? And, and I, I, I truly believe we are here solely for relationships. Yeah. It doesn't have to do with money. It doesn't have to do with materials. It doesn't have to do with any of that. Yeah. People yearn for relationships. Yeah. They really do. And the more and more people you can invite into your life, no matter what it is, by showing compassion, consideration, and of course, love, right? The act of, not, that, right. not, not just the verb. words, but, yeah. but the act of it. Yeah. Um, and, if, and if I could do it all over again, and I can go all the way back to um, the, the moment, the day that all of us kids walk down the the concrete stairs of the courthouse and we all went different ways i i'd look at my mom and 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 and, and not apologize but then and and then say i think this is i think this is supposed to be because mm. when we come back together it, 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 it should be stronger yeah but then what happens after that the act is what continues either the separation or the relationship mm -hmm. and i can honestly say based on everything that has happened in my life moving away all of that and, and shutting everybody out especially my family i have made the relationships more distant because i just can't open that door to invite everybody in mm -hmm. and that's on me you know what i mean um so my my brother passes we try to get everybody together to to you know celebrate him and it's not it's not what you see on tv it's not what you see with families that that truly spend time together our our family is so separated in in everything aunts uncles brothers sisters mom stepdad stepdads all of that so we are so separated almost to the point where you go is this even normal mm -hmm. maybe it is i don't know but I got people. I got family that's moved all over the place, you know, including myself. You know, my uh, sister lives in Florida. I have cousins that live in Florida. My brother and his wife lives in Michigan. So, getting everybody together at that at that moment um, at my brother's place was it was uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you should be able to walk in there and not feel like a stranger. And now a quick break for you to think about how much you love the narrator of this podcast. And now back to the episode. Completely. And in that moment, we had him cremated, and he's, you know, by himself on this on this shelf, and we're outside and we're talking and kind of listening, and I'm, and I just I start to realize that uh, we spent so much time really separating ourselves and our our own beliefs that we couldn't get out of our way our own ways to, to just bring each other back mm -hmm. because that's all you knew, you know, to understand each other. Yeah. yeah. And, and people blame technology and social media as a distraction. And I think there's truth to that, but I also think that because of technology and social media and, it, and the internet information is at your fingertips, like right now. But like, like I talked about with like, love if, if your act is to be completely negative with it expect negative return correct but if you use it for something that's good maybe something better will happen yeah and and obviously you know if you're on facebook and you watch everything that's going on in today's world you can see there's so much hate division out there right because people would rather be right than 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 fix the problem right you know so there, there yeah there's not a lot of solutions no there's not a lot, a lot of, of talk. solutions a lot of talk and you know yeah. what I'm one of them, right? I mean, sure. I get I get on a rant about something that I'm I honestly about. don't well, like. <laughs> I, I probably the last three or four weeks, I've I've barely been on Facebook to like scroll through stuff. Don't do it, <laughs> right? Because it's like I'm just gonna put my me out there and my yeah. stuff, right? And yeah. then and then just kind of duck, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so that's uh, that's the thing. So, um, it, I was I was talking with a friend about my brother's death not too long ago, and we were talking about. Um, you know you again you mentioned dark days right mm -hmm. and we were talking about my acceptance with it because it's been a while 
you know, it's been it's been long enough that I think I should either talk more about it um, and try to find a way to move forward because you know they say you know you go through these stages of grieving and of grief and and um, one of those things is when did it hit you Hmm. and you know what's tough for me it hasn't though because I get close to if if I can illustrate this I'm walking down this road Mm -hmm. right and it's so dark out there and the only light I see is is the 10 feet in front of me right which is my vision that is my light that's it until I decide to open my eyes and allow my vision to go a little bit further Um, I'm stuck at this 10 foot rule, right? And I'm walking down this road and I, every time I get an opportunity where I can barely see him or hear him, I shut him out. Mm. And I think it's because I don't want to accept this just yet, you know, or you're one of the most eerie things for me with my brother is I'm getting ready in the morning to go to work. And every once in a while you're staring in the mirror and the way that the light hits you or your movement you see a little bit of him Mm, because mm -hmm. i do see him right yeah and and it ruins me for that moment it ruins me because i start to think about he's never going to be able to say i love you to somebody he's never even going to be able to pick up the phone and text me call me he's never going to be able to go on a date open the car door for somebody say hi to whomever he doesn't get to do that anymore so why do i get to Hmm. And that's that's the struggle I have, you know. It's and, it's the fairness almost. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's probably a a good illustration. Is like it's unfair, mm-hmm. you know. And people say, "Well, life's not fair." Well, we know that. Yeah, you know, it's it's not pretty right. obvious. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah obvious. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, every every time Mother's Day rolls around, um, of course I I dread it, you know, um, and. Are you still distance from your mom? I mean, is that- you know, I talk to her, and and it's my fault. I, I mean, I should be doing. I should probably put a little bit more effort into figuring this out. You know, sure. she's three hours away. She lives in Wisconsin. I see my foster family more than I see my mom, and mm. it's and it's uh, unfair to her. It really is. It's just that as I'm growing older, I, I start to realize the reason for my actions. And growing up in our household knowing what i know now i don't think we've we've really presented love to to everybody Mm. it was always chaos there was always distractions there was always people headbutting you know and and it wasn't my mom's fault i mean you know she had us four kids prior to the four kids she she had another son marcus that that died as a baby Mm -hmm. so my mom has been through like oh my god yeah like I, i i don't I honestly don't know how she keeps trucking, but she's like me, very stubborn in her ways. Um, and she figures it out, you know, but mm-hmm. doesn't mean she's not hurting. Yeah. So every time Mother's Day rolls around, I, I think about all of this, right? And I think uh, I think the struggle is the reason why I just can't make that extra effort is because growing up, I just don't think I've ever felt what a family and what love is supposed to feel like. Mm. And I'm starting to realize that now. It's not to blame anybody. It's just, we didn't know that. We right. fought. You know, we, we were, you know, I was born in Chicago. I was born in, in uh, Cook County, Illinois. Um, and knowing what I know, it was the projects. It was bad. Sure. Um, a lot of hate, a lot of racism, a lot of, a lot of violence. Um, you know, I remember walking down an alley with my brothers to go to this park and my brother's, got beat up all their clothes stolen and we and we walked home naked to the house and that's how it was and people a lot of people don't know that you know i i've I've, even my wife doesn't know the whole story Mm -hmm. um it's only when you get into those brave moments where you start bringing more stuff up and she's like i didn't know that about you yeah that's hard it's very difficult um and again i don't use that as a like hey whoa me type thing but i think it's what makes me who i am now but it, but it's also my curse too, because I push a lot of people away from me, mm. and and it's I think it's because I'm afraid to, to get close to somebody and then watch, watch their hearts break or watch my heart break or or whatever it is. It's like I tell my wife, I don't get excited about a lot of things until it's happening. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've been so disappointed getting excited leading up until the opportunity, mm-hmm. and then it's gone. 
right and then it never happens you know there's some wisdom in that though sure i mean expectations have to be realistic yeah. right you can't be can't be too lofty and no. then then you do get crushed yep yep so yeah so, there's some wisdom in that yeah as long as you're happy in the moment i i, you know, I agree with that you know yeah. you I mean, can't always just be a scrooge i mean you gotta, right right you gotta be able to you know enjoy the experience because yeah. you know 15 minutes ago we, we don't get that time back right you know what i mean yeah so like doing this is like to me it's so important to me because a i've never done this before yeah like i said i follow you on almost everything sure even when i'm upset or pissed off about something it, it's like sometimes the world knows and one of your things will come through and i watch it and i'm like <clears throat> <laughs> don't get so pissed about that yeah right <laughs> you know don't be ups don't, don't be so upset it's 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 not that big of a deal but yeah but but it is you know it can be you know and yeah so it's it's interesting uh, you know coming back to when you talked about information it's so uh, when you look at channels used to be news channels yeah. right they used i mean cnn used to be news fox used to be news they're media mm -hmm. i mean that's really all that it is right <laughs> yeah i mean they're just there to make money Almost entertainment uh, of some sort. Right? Yeah, it yeah. certainly can be. Yep. Yeah. And so the information is what's so important. But what's, I think both of us have found something very interesting at uh, some videos that we each shared, mm -hmm. in fact, in how uh, certain things will get completely shut down mm -hmm. and other things are like just okay when they're completely false. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like it's pretty remarkable kind of that line that seems to be drawn right now. Yeah. Um, and so what does that mean? Like, can we not put information in our ideas out there anymore? Or, and I don't know if we want to go down that rabbit hole, yeah, but, <laughs> but, you know, you just, you talked about uh, getting mad over stuff. It's like, but why, mm -hmm. you know, why are we getting mad at, at opinions and not understanding? And is it harder to understand each other on social media than a communication like this? And Absolutely. you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, I mean, it's I, like. I, Sending a text to somebody. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. The um, meaning or the uh, influence or enthusiasm behind the text isn't what the, what the reader reads. Right. Which there's zero inflection. Zero. So it's what you perceive. And, yep. and the whole perception is reality. It's the truth, right? If you yeah. send me a text about, hey, uh, we got to cancel today. I got something else going on. Yeah. Nobody goes to the positive side of it and goes, oh, something good came up in his life. <laughs> yeah, right. Now we're going to reschedule. Right. No, it's always like, what the heck? What do you mean? I, yeah. I plan my whole day around this. Right. Now it's your fault. Yeah. What? That's unfair. Now your day is ruined now, because now, it's my fault, yeah, right? And, and it's yeah. not. It's just uh, yeah. things come up, things happen. But you're right. Yeah. You know, the information piece is uh, it's, it's what you take. So when the, the media or, or whatever puts this whatever out there whatever it is it does it doesn't even matter it's, no it's how you perceive it and then guess what when your voice starts to do this and you invite people in, we call it the victim triangle and you victim victimizer and enabler yes all you're doing is looking for people and enable your current circumstances for sure and i've been there yeah. i've done it just so i can say see <laughs> yeah. i told you right so and so from new york that follows me says blah, blah. yeah <laughs> it's like it's so wrong you yeah know, it's yeah it's wrong and i gotta get better at that and you know i think a lot of people we do. yeah we all do absolutely yeah. yeah i'm guilty of it too <laughs> for sure but i think uh you know with with information too i think uh you know distancing yourself away from that isn't always the best either it's kind of like again the the same thing that are that's going on right now it's like the more and more people that are silent about the, the circumstance it's it's wrong it, it needs to be the other way people need but it needs to be influential po with with positive um enthusiasm it, can, it can't be so negative you know positive enthusiasm and and facts yes right yep. like that's really important in certain movements yep yep i mean the facts are really important yeah absolutely you know so um so going back you know to to my brother it's just uh it's difficult it's it's hard and and like i said i still haven't gotten to that point that crossroad where i could either move forward right or i can take a left or take a right and and decide to um, go down the road that maybe would help me mm -hmm. before i get back on this road over here you know and you know the cliche you're at the crossroads of of all this stuff so you know choose a path but i promise you the path that you're about to go down it's it's not going to be the wrong one you're going to learn more about the circumstance and the situation it's what you do with the information and you know have there been nights where i'm alone by myself you know maybe my wife is gone with a friend or my son paulo's you know at his friend's house or something and i'm by myself and and i start to think yes 
did I break down and just lose it? Absolutely. Yeah. But it still hasn't hit me. And I mm. think that's been, you know, it's been five years now, you know, oh, shit, six years. I'm sorry. It's six, yeah, this six, isn't six. censored, so <laughs> whatever. You know, um, so we put on, we put on there that it's not for kids anyway, either way. So it's so good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, um, I think I'm waiting for that moment. Um, and, you know, my wife was really excited about me doing this because yeah. um, I asked her the other day, too, when we were talking, um, I go, do you want to be there? And she goes, no. Yeah. And I said, why? And she says, and it's perfect. She goes, if I'm there, you will not be in your most natural state. Yeah. You need this. And yeah. I think I think Matt's going to help you with this a lot because he's got a story. He can, he can feel... I'm, getting a little emotional here he can feel that with you yeah you know and he feels it every day you feel it every day yeah and you need to get this out you know what i mean so totally i was like honored like mm. when we made the now i'm getting emotional thank you <laughs> but yeah. and, I, and i truly mean that i mean i i yeah. I've, it's hard to talk to people um it's hard to talk to even a counselor or or anything like that just because not saying that the, they've never went through it but it's like it's rare though that it's they rare. do yeah. yeah and have i talked to other people not really you know i've tried but i don't i don't get the same out of it as i do with something like this do you know what i mean i do completely that's why i started this yeah. like the this matt logan speaks whole channel right yeah. like just because there's i haven't seen anything like it yeah not, I'm not saying it's good or, no. or bad or right or wrong. I'm just saying I've never seen anything like it, and I had to go through my experience with counselor and family, yeah. and um, not community of people who have struggled, you know, yeah. with similar situations. So, yeah. so I appreciate this. You Thank know, this you. Is, this is good. You know, I, I, like I said, I think I, what happens after this, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, right. I, I might no, get right. my truck and just like <gasps> <laughs> just start crying, but totally, you know, but yeah. uh, but it's. Uh, you know, my heart's feeling something a little bit different right now, and you know, and I appreciate that. So yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah. And now for a quick break for you to think of someone you can encourage today. And now back to the episode. So, any advice that you? I mean, you've been pretty transparent so far. Any advice that you? could offer somebody or me even like i don't i don't know if it's so much advice because you can never prepare yourself for mm. the next second yeah you know you can think you you think you can i agree you know what i mean you yeah. think you can say i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna take a shower i'm gonna brush my teeth because it's a routine it's a habit yep. and i'm gonna be ready for work yeah but are you you yeah. know what i mean so yeah. i don't know and in trying to give anybody sort of any sort of advice on you know what to look forward to it's uh it's it's just a story you know and you know and this is this is our story this is your story now i'm part of your book now you know i'm a chapter in your story <laughs> yes you know, so for sure at the and as you are with me so yeah. at, at the end of it when it's done tell the story of the mountain you climbed exactly. it could be a page in someone else's survival guard uh, exactly. morgan harper nichols yeah, you know, that, yeah. and it's and it's tough to give advice to. Some, and and really, the only thing is, is like try to find a way through through everything to try to just try to try to create as many relationships as you can. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and I think that's probably the most influential or the most powerful thing you could probably do, right? Can you invite as many people into your life? share those experiences whatever the experience is you're going to have bad ones you're going to have good ones you're going to have distractions you're going to have separation but but you're going to have love somewhere yeah. it's just can you can you show that at least can you do it and yeah i don't know i, I want to say i think you're in a pretty good place because you've mentioned moving forward often and so many people use that they want to move on from it mm -hmm. and i there's it's two very different things moving on and moving forward um sold my car i'm moving on from it i got something different right you right. know yep. but moving forward is is just working through and dealing with life and um you know like i tell groups in q and a's when they ask certain questions it's like well i brought you know deej with me mm -hmm. today 
I moved forward with her, yeah. just like I did my other three kids. Yep. They can't be here today either, right. you know. But you bring the memory with you, yep. um, and things like that. So I think I think you're in a, a better place than maybe you realize. Maybe. And I appreciate <laughs> that transparency with it too. But yeah. when you talk about moving forward, you're moving in that direction. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. And and yeah. I and I hope it's right. I mean, one of the things that I truly try to hold myself accountable to, and you know, and of course, I fall short of this often, um, is leaders. As, as a leader and as learning to be a better leader, leaders don't push people. They pull people. Yeah. And the more and more you push, usually you push people away. Yeah. Right? Because you can't want it more than them. Right. And you can't want it in the worst way because that's how you'll get it in the worst way. Yes. So if you can continue to at least pull people along and say, here, come with me. Yeah. Let me take the first shot. Let yeah. me Let me be the one who maybe takes the first opportunity to fail because i'm gonna i want you to see that and then be better you know what i mean and completely and you know where i work i try to teach that with my team in fact they 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 make they they, they make fun of me a little bit because i always go just and they go be better you know and it's like <laughs> just be better just yeah no matter that no matter what it is you yeah. know if, if you didn't go out there and say hi to a customer the way you're supposed to say hi to a customer and greet them in, and it's like hey just be better okay i gotta say hi better you know yeah and it's like that's not pushing that's pulling right yeah and yeah you know, I, I kind of put it like, I'm going to go this direction. I have a, a rope that I'm pulling along, yep. hang on and let's go. Yeah. You know, I want to do this together, but yep. I'm also going to, I can't force you to do it. Nope. So if you want to yep. come along, you have to hold on to the rope. Yeah. And as people sometimes branch off and you have to carry more of the weight, that's, that's where the weight of the world, you yeah. know, the, the mm -hmm. illustration of the weight of the world yeah. is because you are, you're pulling so much more weight, yep. but then you have to make the decision to say, Hey, I'm not doing a good enough job because this is getting harder. I need to invite more people in to help me pull this mm -hmm. rope. And if I can, it's not that things are going to get easier. It's it's that things are going to be more transparent. Yeah. You know what do they say? Uh, what's the what's the line? More uh, more hands make light work. Yeah, so, like many hands make light work yeah, or something, something like that. that. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I've, heard, yeah. I've heard somebody say that, and I'm like, that actually makes more sense. Quit trying to do it all on your own. Yeah. You know, at least at least demonstrate what you're trying to do, illustrate yeah. that and see, and see what happens. So, and like Stephen Covey said to begin with the end in mind, always, right. You know, yep. and that's super important as a leader as well, leading your own life. Yep. I mean, people get leadership so mixed up, I think, yeah. you know, it's like, well, I don't have a team. I'm just, uh, you know, I work at the gas station or whatever. It's like, well, you lead your life, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, lead your life. Leadership is influence, whether it's negative or positive. So everybody is a leader in some sort of fashion. Yes. I mean, that, you know, you waking up in the morning and deciding to do whatever it is, you could either go down this dark road of, oh, I'm just going to binge watch Netflix and not do shit today. Yeah. I, I don't want to do any of that. Yeah. And and next thing you know, you're you're like, well, was this a positive influence, you know, type move today? Probably not. Right. I didn't do anything that was impactful. You yeah. Know? But we've been there and we all take, you know, time for ourselves. But, you know, I'm a I'm I'm a complete believer in, in leadership is is, you know, it's it's influence. You know, you gotta influence whomever's around you. you yeah. Know, some way, shape, or shape. And place. that might be yourself in the mirror. Yes. I mean it, it you know, I, I it's very true. Well, any uh words of wisdom as we wrap up, sir? I would say like what I struggle with and what I work on is like invite as many people in your into your life as possible. You know, be you open up the the relationship pool and 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 you know that that's where that's where love is. That's you know remove yourself from as many chaotic you know type things as you can and and uh, and and enjoy life. I mean, you you have to find a way to do it. Um, but it's okay to show people how vulnerable you are too. Yeah. You know, cause that's guys have a hard time with that too. I, I mean, macho. we don't it, want anybody to know that we have a heart right you know, underneath. The right. Skin, so, and you know, boy, when I lost Deej, I was like, throw that crap out the window. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. That macho, that doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. You know, doesn't. when you go through these things, it just doesn't. Yeah. And I think, and I don't think any, you know, when you, when you start to realize that people don't care about that, yeah, they want to know who you are. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I, it's funny you bring that up too because with with being vulnerable, I've taught this with with my team as well too. You know, we call it the loose dragon scale. It, you know, mm. if you you know, there's always like when you watch movies and stuff, there's always the arrow and you got to hit him at that's a certain right. Spot yeah, right yeah, there, mm -hmm. right by his heart for sure. That's the weak spot. His his or hers, uh, you know, Achilles tendon. You know, but it's the the weak dragon scale. 
men don't like to show that. Yeah. You know, they, they or admit they have it or admit they have it. And until you have a traumatic experience in your life or something, something that changes your, your compass, right? You, if you can show people that, if you can honestly show that vulnerability, um, and, and, and show them it's okay. You have an opportunity right now. You could take complete advantage of me or you could just love me. Which is it? Yeah. I think more people choose love than taking people for granted. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I think that we all want that. Yeah. We just don't know how to do it. Yeah. You know, and we, and we travel a whole lifetime trying to figure this out, you know? So, but that's wisdom. If that's all I got. It's not, <laughs> it's not good. So. Well, man to man. Yeah. Thank you for being shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you for being strong. Thank you for being hope. Thank you for being influential. Thank you for being necessary. And thank you for being you. Awesome. I appreciate that. I feel the same way about you. Thanks. Your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> and we'll see you all next time. Mm-hmm.